Hi, I'm Miles. I'm eight years old. I'm a young ambassador for Majesty in Space, and I'm very pleased to be interviewing you today. Um, uh, can you please introduce yourself, Ruth? Of course, I'd love to. So my name's Ruth, and I am an inventor and engineer, and I invented a product for my GCSE resistant materials project called the Stair Study and I co-host a YouTube channel with my friend Sean called Kids Invent Stuff. Okay so my first question um, yeah, kind of first. Um, what was it like starting a company at the age of 16? So starting a company at the age of 16 was a little interesting, although I suppose I didn't really have anything to compare it to. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I just thought I would have a go. <laughs> I had a, a laptop and a phone and, oh. oh, I think it's gone. There we go, we're back. Um, yeah, I just had a laptop and a phone and I started it from my parents' dining room table. So it wasn't very fancy. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but I, I enjoyed it and just had a go. Just, yeah, I, I found people that wanted to buy the product. I worked out the best way to sell it and make it. And it was just a real learning curve, asking lots of questions. So asking people, how they'd started their businesses, finding out how people ran their businesses. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything to compare it to because it wasn't like I had trained to do this and then gone out and done it. I was very naive and I just thought I wanted to have a go. Okay. Um, didn't you find it difficult at starting a business? That's uh, did I find it difficult? Is that the question? It kind of froze them. Um, uh, didn't you find it difficult at starting a business at such a young age? Yeah, I did find it a little bit of, of uh, difficult for, for in, um, yeah, different things I found it difficult. So for example, a very well-known bank wouldn't give me any business banking information um some of the practicalities so like for my business bank account because i was under 18 i had to have my dad on it uh which caused quite a lot of trouble later on actually when i wanted to get rid of him off that um so yeah there were a few things like that 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 weren't fun to have to deal with um but i i felt very i feel very lucky that i had some great people around me to support me okay so I saw a TED talk where you said you wanted to be a barrister and go to Cambridge University. Um, how did you feel when you became an engineer instead of a barrister? I was very happy to become an engineer. I think I, I only wanted to become a barrister because that was a career that I had seen, if I'm honest, mainly on the TV, mainly in media. Um, I liked the idea of fighting for people's justice, <laughs> um, but now knowing more about law I know that that is not necessarily how it works so I had one idea in my head and that's why I wanted to go into that profession yeah. but actually that isn't necessarily how that profession works so I'm not disappointed that I didn't become a barrister or study law uh, I love being an engineer and I'm just really passionate that other people understand what engineering is because I don't think I would have been a very happy lawyer or barrister so I want to make sure that other young people know that engineering is a career they could do even if they don't want to do it but that they know it's an option for them. Um, Fun fact my dad used to be a lawyer and my uncle used to be a barrister. And do they enjoy their job? No idea. <laughs> I I liked the idea of arguing in court. Um, I think that lawyers do some amazing work, but I also think they have to work in situations that I would really struggle with. Um, yeah, but I, I, I definitely think there were parts of the job I would enjoy, but actually lots of it, there's lots of writing and I would not have enjoyed that. So yes, I found out in enough time. 
I don't like writing either. Um, are you considering to go to go back being a barrister? I know you've already answered it, but I'm going going with my sheet. Go for it. Um. Um. Okay, let's just skip that. Um. How did you start your YouTube channel? How did it... so? Me and my friend Sean, we met through an engineering competition. And we had spent a lot of time talking about doing a STEM, so like science, technology, engineering, and maths education program, which sounds really boring. But we wanted to do something that showed how exciting engineering was, but was really accessible. And we thought YouTube would be great because it allows you to be super responsive. You can create your own videos, you can interact with people. And so, we and actually a lot of, of people watch YouTube. Most young people watch YouTube on a okay. daily basis. So we I wanted actually, to. I I personally like um watching funny cat videos. Exactly. There's so much content on there. Like growing up, we just had the TV. So all of the media that I watched was really kind of on the TV. But the internet has opened up this whole plethora of cat videos um, that we should all embrace. Uh, and so, yeah, we wanted to start on YouTube because it allowed us to upload our content and run the challenges. So Sean and I spent a lot of time talking about what we might do and how the project might work. And we settled on Kids Invent Stuff, which is a YouTube channel where each month we have different invention challenges running. And four to 11 year olds send in their invention ideas as pictures or videos. And then Sean and I choose one to build. Usually one, sometimes more, but we choose one to build. Okay. Um, what What was your favorite design on your YouTube channel so far? Oh, that's a hard question. Um, pretty much, I mean, every invention we get sent is amazing. And every one that we build is different in its own way, if that makes sense. There are some that are quite memorable. So we made a giant gravity racer, like a soapbox racer that was shaped like a cake and made out of cake. And that was quite memorable because we took it to a gravity race and we raced it alongside these really, um, yeah, really fancy gravity racers. And there we were with our cake. Um, what do you look for in uh, invention idea applications? Ooh, so it's more about the actual idea than it is the drawing. Um, we always ask for an invention to be drawn and then potentially labeled and then a little sentence because that obviously that allows Sean and I to look at it and know what it is. But it's not necessarily about amazing artistic skills. It is totally about the invention idea. So I always say to people, if you think, oh, I can't draw this thing, don't worry, just label it as a thing. If you label a little blob as a tree, it becomes a tree. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, it's more about the actual idea. So if, I don't know, you know, if someone sends in an idea and we look at it, we're like, yeah, that would be cool to make. So it's not necessarily about the best drawing. It's about something that would be fun and engaging and show, like there has to be enough steps to make it to be, you know, for example, with um, an invention we've just built, which is a cakesicle, you know, you're taking a, a bike or a tricycle, you're adding linear actuators to it, you're putting, you know, attaching a conveyor belt to it. There's lots of different elements yeah. to making it. If there wasn't as many elements to it, then we wouldn't choose it. Does that make sense? There has to be enough making involved in it, and it just has to be a fun and exciting idea. Yeah, like, is it based upon the usefulness or just like just generally the funniness or funness? Yeah, I suppose it's it's the sort of thing that an adult might choose not to build. So an adult might look at slime firing gauntlets and go, oh no, that's far too messy. Whereas we look at it and go, that's a cool invention. Or um, an adult might look at a giant furry electric dog car and be like, why would I want to drive that? Whereas Sean and I are like, why would you not want to drive that? So we want something that's kind of fun and engaging and maybe shows engineering in a way that 
people don't expect. Maybe people don't expect to learn about engineering by, you know, seeing something built like a popcorn firing doorbell yeah. or, you know, um, some, yeah. go on. You, you know, your popcorn firing doorbell, I, I've drew something which is like something like the popcorn firing doorbell. It's like, it's like a surprise attack sort of thing. Nice. With food. Nice. Okay, is this a specific food? Yes, it's a specific food. Okay, are you going to share with me, or are we going to we going to wait a bit? What, what's your plan? It's a surprise. Oh, it's a surprise. Okay, okay. Well, I'm very excited to see that because that sounds very interesting. Um, um, are some invention ideas too complex and costly for you to build? So sometimes things are very expensive. So there's a few examples I can think of for, you know, when we do superhero challenges, we'll often get sent suits that allow you to fly. Now, actually that's an invention that's already been built. A guy called Richard Browning has made a jetpack suit. So we try and look and, and find things that haven't already been made. But again, our budget and time maybe wouldn't reach to building a jetpack in that time. But there are times where sometimes we've been sent an invention and we've looked at it and gone, okay, we need to try and make this work. So Connor's crazy car, which is a car where you press a red button, your seat goes up through the roof, so you're riding about two meters in the air. That invention, the cost of building that was more than our budget. So I spent a frantic few days calling around companies saying, could you sponsor this build? We need to buy, we could either buy a scissor lift or a car. We didn't have the budget for both. So I was like, could you give us enough money so we could buy a scissor lift? And it was past my deadline that I'd given myself, but literally the morning that we would have had to start making something else, a company called back and said, yes, we'll give you the money to buy the scissor lift. So we were able to buy the car and the scissor lift. So sometimes cost, it is expensive, you know, when we built the Rube Goldberg machine, which combines 60 kids invention ideas, the build budget alone for that was just mental. But we just try and work really hard with people who support the channel and partners. If there's an invention, and we think we need to build it, we do all we can to try and build it. Yeah. I... So um, kind of some more questions. Um, <laughs> um, have you invented other things other than your stair study? Like not the kids invent stuff things, but proper other things. Proper inventions. Um, I haven't been inventing my own things for a while, but I have started working on some projects. Uh, I can't necessarily talk about them at the moment, but yes, inventing things has started to be become more more and uh, yeah, out of kids events, I've started inventing a few more things. Uh, I found sometimes inventing takes a little bit of inspiration, particularly if you're looking to invent things that people might use on a daily basis. You don't necessarily, I mean, sometimes you just have an idea, but they take a bit of work and time. So yes, I have been working on other projects, um, but I love the fact for kids invent stuff, we, we have the easy job. You guys have the hard job coming up with the inventions. We just have to bring them to life. So yeah, <laughs> coming up with the invention is definitely the harder part of the job. Um, uh, uh, like, the, the, I, there's a question that's not on my list, but. Yeah, ask away. Do, do you have any Arduino-based um, inventions? Loads of Arduino-based inventions. Like Arduino so, non-complex based inventions. like Yeah, so the popcorn doorbell is Arduino-based. So when you press the button, a lot of the timings to make the, uh, what's it called, letterbox open with a little linear actuator that runs off an Arduino and to set the off the actual um, popcorn firing bit of it. Uh, most of the things that we do, we tend to use an Arduino for. So a lot of our kind of the robots that we make, a lot of the, um, I'm trying to think, oh, so like when we've done uh, bits that involve maybe multiple elements, so like sound and lights and things, they use Arduinos. Um, I'm trying to think, we, 
What did we use recently? Uh, I think even in the cake bike, yeah, in the cake bike, we had Arduinos that set off, um, that controlled the stepper motor. So I would say most inventions that have electrical elements <laughs> are controlled by an Arduino. And it's not massively complicated. So it might just be setting off a linear actuator. It might just be, uh, you know, when you press the button, wait so many seconds before you activate this bit. Do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So it's nothing yeah. too complicated. Um, I have an Arduino Uno um, at home. I'm, I'm really itching to use it. Yeah, we we have used Arduinos for a lot of things. I'm trying to think what would be a really... I'm trying to think of something that I could recommend you make that your parents might not be cross with me for recommending because things like popcorn doorbells are very messy. Um, so let me have a think and see if there's something that I can think of that might be slightly less messy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, for my ninth question, well, not the ninth, but ninth question on this list, um, what, what, where do you see your future? Oh, that's a big question. Um, I just enjoy designing, making things, problem solving. Um, I love producing kind of video content and things like that, so filming, making, because uh, it is a different thing. If you're just making something, it's very different to filming something to make or making something to film, whichever way you want to go with it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd like to keep doing more of this, more making, and also just trying to show other young people that it's fun and exciting and there's lots of interesting things they could be making and building. Okay. So, um, do, do you have any other hobbies? <laughs> oh, um before uh, Kids Invent Stuff, well, before we started filming Kids Invent Stuff, I used to swim competitively, but obviously that takes a lot of training. So when I started Kids Invent Stuff, I decided to step away from that. So I still do a little bit of swimming, but not quite to the level that I used to. And I run. Um, I have a little boy who's two, which takes up a lot of my time. <laughs> um, I have um, a cousin that lives here who's also two. He's an absolute terror. All he does, kick me, hit me, bite me, punch me, slap me, pinch me. Terrible twos. This is it. So I have a two-year-old. And Yeah, like, that's my hobby is to try and... my stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yes, a lot of my, I, I feel very lucky because a lot of the things that used to be my hobbies have become part of my job. So when people say like, what are your hobbies? I'm like, uh, most of the things that are in my job, are things that I enjoyed doing before. But yes, I still try and run and, uh, yeah, kind of, I like being outdoors. Um, I don't always have lots of time for those sorts of things, but running, swimming, climbing, biking, all those sorts of things. Um, but yes, a, the two-year-old takes up a lot of time. I spend a lot of time in soft play trying to control him. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. What happens to your kids invent stuff, inventions after you film the video? Oh, good question. So some of them stay in the workshop. So certain things, so for example, the popcorn doorbell, parts of that were in place where we film the test and we couldn't leave those bits in place. So some things have to be taken apart just because they can't stay and live where we filmed them. Um, but we do keep bits of them. So in the workshop, we've got the actual doorbell from Popcorn Doorbell. In my workshop here, I've got, I don't know if you've seen the tea train. Let me see if I can turn it. So I've got the tea train, the train that delivers you tea. Oh, yeah. um, I need to add back to the shelf uh, the spy phone firing camera. I need to work out where I'm going to keep the karaoke mop because they're also inventions I currently have here. Um, we have a big shipping container where lots of things live. So in there at the moment, things like the dog car, we've got the sleigh that throws presents. Yeah. Um, so lots of inventions live in the shipping container. And then there is a whole group of them that are out there in the world. So um, something called the Institute of Imagination. They have our jam firing rocket. They have our flamethrower helmet. They have our hat for dogs that generates electricity. 
Uh, the Cakesicle, so the bike that feeds you cake, that's currently at the IET uh, at Savoy Place in London. Um, so some of them live out in the world and some yeah. live in our container. What recommendations do you have for children who want to invent something useful? Oh, very good question. I would start with a problem. So I would either find a problem that you have or a friend or family member has and try and design something to solve that problem. So I, if you can't think of any problems that you want to solve, start asking other people or I have a little note on my phone. So every time I come across something that might be a problem, I write a little note and then when I get near a computer, I Google to see if there's something that would solve that problem. So it might be something super simple and a lot of the time there is a thing to solve that problem. But sometimes I'm like, oh, there isn't. Maybe that would be something I'd like to solve. So that's how I would recommend starting is kind of look for those problems or products you could make better or things that you think people are missing. Okay. So, um, that um any tips for young people who will be um submitting invention ideas oh um we love it when you name them so obviously the you know people send invention ideas on the back of receipts they send them uh yeah on as videos there's so many different ways and essentially all we want to see is a picture of your idea or a video of you talking us through your idea a little paragraph about it and your first name and age um and yeah i mean you can go into lots of detail you can color it in if you want to but as long as someone can look at it and know what that invention drawing and idea is then that's perfect um but yeah i think it's it's about you doing it in your own way some people love drawing some people love writing play to your strengths do you know whatever whatever represents you but yes, I would definitely um, maybe have a think about a name for it or think about um, just make sure that if someone looks at it and they're not you, they can understand it. Um, okay, so uh, here's my invention. Close your eyes. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, okay, I'm closing my eyes. Open your eyes. Can you see it? The yeah, nice. Could you, yeah, down a bit, down a bit. Let's see. So here's my paragraph. Um, a ninja robot that throws fried eggs at people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Can I see your picture? Can you put I a picture in the middle? Like some sort of prank machine. Nice. A ninja, top secret, hides in the shadows, throws the eggs. Is there a particular reason for fried eggs? Do you not like eggs? Do you like eggs? I do like eggs. So I'm just going to include it on my invention. Cool. I like it. I like the reasoning. I, I um, think the fried egg ninja sounds good. We've got some uh, targets here. Can you see it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And here's my... Perfect. I love it. That's the perfect example of an invention. If you, like Mile, have any invention ideas you want to send in, then you can send them to our website, which is www.kidsinventive.com. Uh, we always have an invention challenge, or you can send random ones, so go for it. But yeah, that is a perfect, that, that, that is a perfect example uh, of an invention to submit. Ta-da! Calling all four to 11 year old Homo sapiens, visit the um, plugin that was down below, now it is, um, website to find out more and submit your invention ideas. Um, so yeah, down there. Amazing, beautiful. You'll be taking my job soon, Miles. You'll be like, that's it. Me and Sean are gonna retire and you can do it. Okay, so, um. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for letting me interview you today. It's been a real pleasure. No, thank you for having me. Amazing questions. I've loved it.